Welcome back, Lunch Transmit Nation. Uh, I'm here with Miss Shirley Brill of EMAT. Um, we're having a really wonderful conversation. I mean, not just about, we are both Lunch Transmit recipients and um, and she was, uh, you know, blessed to have her 16 years ago. And that's a number I'm definitely shooting for. That would be awesome. Uh, I'm talking about two and a half uh, years out. But also she's doing a lot of important work with EMAT. Um, which is her nonprofit organization, basically, you know, teaching people of color, um, you know, about transplant. And it's not just lung transplant, it's kidney, it's liver transplant, and so forth and so on. So the last time we left Ms. Brill was about that, you know, within the black community, there is some sort of a stigma that you know, we, we we don't go to the doctors as often as, you know, we, we should. Or at least we don't check up, you know, on our health until, God forbid, something is really, really bad. Uh, so how do we fight that stigma nowadays? I mean, especially now, you know, we have a lot of information, you know, kind of disposable, you know, to us. You know, how, how do you think? I mean, a part of it is awareness, of course. But how do we think? How do you think we, we we can fight that stigma as far as like, hey, you're not feeling well, you know, find a doctor, check it out before things goes off the rail. What is your your opinion? And it's just strictly opinion. I'm asking you, of course. That education is the main key, I would think. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I know now a lot of organizations offer free community events. Uh, we're involved in health fairs, as many as we can get to, mm -hmm. to share our information. But a lot of times in the community, things are offered free. Um, and by free, I mean free information, mm -hmm. where to go, mm -hmm. resources. Mm -hmm. People will contact if certain things happen. What you need to do, insurance information, you know, things like that. And guess what? We don't even go to get the information. Mm -hmm. That's why I said education is very important. Mm -hmm. I think a lot yeah. of it comes from days of old when different things happened in the community that built up mistrust mm -hmm. with people that don't look like us. Yeah, Because a lot of times, um, like I say, I think mistrust is just the key. But even when you, we're going to have to, at some point, put your health first. That's right. Um, I don't think anything happens to our bodies that we're not aware of. Like we both said, you know, we were in denial, but I knew something was wrong when I couldn't breathe. That's not my normal way of life. Mm -hmm. And just like nothing just happens without symptoms. Um, even with kidneys and those diseases that they call the silent disease, mm -hmm. high blood pressure, things like that. Right. Even with those, you have different things, headaches, um, tiredness, those different things that come upon us. We have to address them when they first begin. And early diagnosis makes uh, all the difference. Even with those things we hear so much about, like breast cancer, mm -hmm. things like that. You know, if you wait till the last minute and then want to run to the doctor, you're in stage four. Yeah. So a regular checkup. Mm -hmm. And I was just having this conversation with a friend. If you don't get a checkup, but at least once a year, do that. Take time. A lot of times we just don't want to take time. Mm -hmm. There's a lot to take care of your family, and we know that. Mm -hmm. But guess what? You can't take care of that family if you're not here. If you're, if not, you're healthy. not healthy, that's right. You know, you're still going to run into a problem. So take that day mm -hmm. and take care of yourself. That's what's really important. Uh, you know, a hundred percent right. I, I I really think that um, you know, without getting too heavy into things. I mean, they they are with an old, especially with an old, I would say slightly older generation. They are those concerns, those 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 um, those historical pains that you know, uh, you know, we understand uh, we've been through in the past. But as we are here, we have to basically, as you said, not only take care of ourselves, but 
also try to do the best for us and, and, and our family. And, 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 you know, the checkup, the awareness, like you said, when something is wrong, you don't have to be a doctor. You know it. You feel it. You know it. You know something is wrong. Just take the initiative uh, to at least do an early screening for whatever it is. At least that gives you, uh, you know, a better chance um, as at, at fixing whatever is ailing you. So I think that's that's that that is well said, and uh, you're hundred percent right. Now, with regards to um, transplants in general. Um, I really think that the way the way science has progressed, like for example, a donor can basically help eight different people in transplant. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? From you know, from the kidney to the liver to the lungs um, to eye, uh, you know, uh, cornea. That's I think I think that's one of the most um, uh, uh, number of uh, transplants that are done, people don't understand that, you know, uh, eye surgery, eye transplant, like from, 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 from donors. So can, can, can you talk a little bit about, you know, just as people, donors and donors family who make the sacrifices that their loved one has passed on and how those people can offer uh, uh, life or conti continuation of life for somebody else who was here. Can you talk a little bit about that? Because I know you are involved with so many uh, different organization. Um, as far as like when a, when a donor passes on, how how many other people they can help, and how important it is to become a donor. Well, like you said, uh, one donor can save eight lives. Mm -hmm. I can speak personally because I lost a granddaughter. And my daughter ended up being a, she's now a donor mom. Mm -hmm. uh, we lost her at the age of 23 to lupus. Oh, wow. And um, the only thing she was able to donate, and she was so proud when she got, when I had my transplant, she ended up being here in town. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was really a part of my caregivers because, you know, after that transplant, you can't drive yourself. Mm -hmm. So she went home and graduated from high school and came back to take care of her grandmother. Oh. And uh, she ended up driving me back and forth to my appointments and things like that. And she ended up being a cornea uh, donor, which, she, like I said, she was so very proud that, mm -hmm. guess what? I'm a donor. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. And we would have never thought that at the age of 23, Mm -hmm. She would be called home. But um, it's so important to say yes, especially when children first start. Well, I hate to call them children, but when they go to get their driver's license, mm -hmm. that's probably the first time that you will hear that question. Mm -hmm. Would you like to be an organ donor? Mm -hmm. And in talking to some in the schools, you know, they'll actually tell you, my parents told me to say no. Mm -hmm. Because they, you know, and they go on with the reasons why they should. And, of course, children have to obey what their parents say. Mm -hmm. So that's what we want to reach. At least give them a reason to consider mm -hmm. becoming an organ donor. Because that's a hard decision to make. Uh, we don't know what you used to say, here today, gone tomorrow, here today, gone today. That's, that's right. a very hard decision for loved ones to make. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't even want to ask the question. I can't even imagine having the job of being that person to say, would you consider being an organ donor? Mm -hmm. You know, probably at the worst day of their lives, but there are people who say yes at that time. It's so much easier to go ahead and say yes. And what most people don't realize is that even though you sign the registry to be an organ donor, you have to die under certain conditions. Okay. You know, if you're not on that ventilator, then there's no way that you're going to be a an organ donor mm -hmm. because those organs have to stay vital and alive. That's right. That's right. That's so, right. you know, a lot of people don't realize that. 
And um, a lot of people will say, well, they won't want my kidneys or, oh, no, they would never take my heart. Well, that's a decision of the doctors to make at that time. That's right. Be willing. And not just organs. You can also become a tissue donor. Exactly. And we know that tissues can help in breast reconstruction. So many different things with athletes. I mean, it's just so much more, more that can be done. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we just encourage people to say yes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, most people don't get involved until it happens to someone that they know. Yeah. Then it becomes important. And I'm proud to say, even when I was a teenager, when I um, got my driver's license, I agreed to be an organ donor then. That's why I couldn't believe. You need an organ. You need a lung transplant. <laughs> Not I, mm -hmm. but um, <laughs> you just never know. You no, don't know what tomorrow holds. No, absolutely. I, I think you're hundred percent right. It's 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 the awareness part of it. You understand? Um, and and I really think there are a lot of organization, um, you know, doing a great job just bringing that awareness because, I mean, sometimes people don't know. You understand? They're like, I don't want to become an organ donor, but once they see and realize, you know, how it can help others, um, that yes, it's it is a difficult decision, and by no means I, 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 I'm, I'm making any light of it, but by the same token, it's a situation like you said. You're in a situation that you, you know, unfortunately, that whatever situation happens, but at least to me, I'm thinking whether it's a donor or a donor's family, you might take some solace that, hey, you know what? Some of your loved ones are still here to help others carry on. And I, I personally think that's, um, that is a beautiful thing. And, 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 and we have to keep having that awareness um, because I think it, it, it is helpful. It is helpful for society. It is helpful for, you know, for, for all of us, the recipients and probably also the donor's family that, you know, that their loved ones actually, you know, are helping others carry on. And it's a it's a very selfless, it's a very selfless act. It's a powerful act. And 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 it's something that I'm um, like I said, that hey, listen, I'm a living, breathing embodiment of somebody's selflessness. So, you know, for that I will forever be grateful, no matter how long, you know, um, you know, we're here. And I'll have to stop and put a plug in for living donors because mm -hmm. I think they are special champions. Those are the people who, while they are alive, right. will donate a liver or a portion of their liver mm -hmm. or a kidney. A lot of people don't realize you can live healthy lives with yep. just one kidney. Yep. And those people make the sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Some to family members, and some for people they don't even know. They may just hear about their story mm -hmm. and be led to give. Um, living donors are special people. No, absolutely. And, 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 and I'm glad you pointed out. Great shout out to them because as, as a matter of fact, I, I've read recently, um, and I don't want to misquote, but I think they decided to do like partial living long donors. I, 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 I've read that it's... Um, I think, was it in Japan? I forgot which country it was that they used the family member part of their lungs to to cure the child that had a uh, uh, lungs issue. So mm -hmm. the technology is, 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 is really pushing the boundaries as far as like, we know, we know about, you know, kidney and, 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 and liver to an extent. But for the lungs, that that used to be a no-no, and now they it looks like this finding some success. So you're right, absolutely right. I mean, that's yeah, that's an even another level, really. Uh, leaving donors that people, not just somebody that you may know or you might not know. Um, it's it is a beautiful thing. It is a beautiful thing um, that with the awareness, people are are doing more and more um, to help. Humanity. I mean, that's what it is. I mean, bottom line, we're all human when you look at it. We all we are all humans. Um, so is there anything else that I'm that I that I have uh, failed to brought up that you would like um 
to talk about um, whether it's you know within the transmit community with what you're doing. Uh, the floor is yours, Ms. Brown. I'd like to, I was thinking about two more things I'd like to say while you were talking. Mm -hmm. um, another thing is clinical studies. Mm. A lot of times we don't get involved with clinical studies again because of some of the things that have happened in the past. Mm -hmm. But I know here recently with um, just last year, they said that with kidneys, what they used to test the G filtration rate, uh, GFR. Okay. At one time, they had a certain standard for people of color mm -hmm. and for others. So now they're just using one standard, that one rate for everybody. And I think if we would get more involved with clinical studies, you know, so they can find out more information because we are different. Mm -hmm. I know we're all a part of the human race, but in genetics, sometimes it plays a big part. That is true. And how can they find how to treat you if some of us, a lot of us, don't get involved in those clinical studies? I know for the lungs, I got involved with one right after my transplant. I think it lasts for about five years. Mm -hmm. I'm in one, too. Yep. They, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And it helps to better for them to better understand how can they treat something that they don't have any information on. So that's the importance of clinical studies. And in closing, I'd like to say that even though I am a transplant recipient, I'm also an organ donor. Mm -hmm. But my call comes whatever they can take out of Shirley Brill to yeah. help somebody else. They <laughs> are more than, they can just leave my hair there <laughs> because anything else I can leave for somebody to help them live a better life, they're welcome to. Amen, amen to that. So yes, uh, to really uh, and capture this, it is important, a very important point that you made, uh, Ms. Brill, about participating in studies because if if they don't have the data, then it's hard to really try to pinpoint things as accurately as possible because mm -hmm. this, this is something you don't want to have a guessing game. So you're right. Uh, the more we can participate as a community uh, in studying so so they know what the difference is between you know X and you know Y and so forth and so on, that definitely helps the medical community better understand how to treat us uh, better. That's 100%. And um, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, please go ahead. And one more thing before we close out, let me put this plug in for educating minorities about transplants. Da -da 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 -da. Look for us on Facebook, on Instagram. You can find us at LinkedIn. And uh, we'd be more than happy for you to join us. We're located in the city of Jacksonville in the wonderful state of Florida. All right. All right. I'll definitely put the plug in uh, once, you know, once we are done and encouraging people to really check out your Facebook page, your Instagram. And that's how I found you. Um, I really think you're doing uh, a really uh, a tremendous amount of work. And like I said, it's not just about the the the, the, the transplant recipients that we are. You also, you know, uh, are putting a spotlight on the caregivers. You're putting a spotlight on the donor's family as well, which is important. Giving them some light, giving them some shine that, you know, these people, you know, even living donors, you know, uh, so forth and so on. So you're really doing a, a wonderful job into bringing this on the forefront and bring it into people's consciousness. Because like you said, sometimes it's unfortunate it's when something happened to us or somebody close to us, that's when like, oh, really, what's that? So I think the more education, the more we talked about it, um, really the better I think we will be not only as a community, but also as a human race. So with that, Ms. Shirley Brill, thank you so much for your time. I know you are very busy person and I'm sure you and I will cross path again and then we'll do this again. Thank you very much for and thank you time. for the opportunity to share. It's 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 been my pleasure. 
You have a wonderful, wonderful day, man. And you also. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Thank you. Well, folks, this is it. I had a really wonderful conversation with Ms. Shirley Brill of EMAT. I really hope you got a lot out of it. And I think part of the part of it also is bringing awareness, not just to the black community, to people of color, but to people in general, how transplants save lives. Like one donor um, can save up to the lives of eight people. And that is very important to think about. So thank you. Have a blessed day. I'll see you soon.